You know, you come to Las Vegas, right? You've seen the movies, you've seen all the TV shows and all the big fights. Billboards everywhere and big TV screen, massive on hotels, full-size hotel screens. I look at them and I go, oh, that's Tyson Fury. Wait a minute, that's me. Dream come true. The Everest was climbed. There was no more for me to do. In my mind, I'd achieved everything I ever wanted to do. When the unthinkable becomes reality, there's just nothing else for you at that moment. If you're an addicted personality, when you achieve that greatness you've always wanted, you're like, is this it? What next? I didn't have anything more to prove. And the fire was dead. There was no fire. I was forcing myself to fight. And I always said, I didn't want to be one of those people who just fought for money. Because there's plenty of people with money in the world, plenty of them. But who knows them? We've all got a few quid. What does it really matter? Mm. What's the difference in a rich man and a poor man? Tell me that. Oh. And we're all bare bums in the shower at the end of the day. But one thing, right, you can have all the money in the world, but what can you really take with you? Nothing. Memories. Everything on this world will stay here. But you know what? They've been talking about me in a thousand years. The Gypsy King from England and that there's only one dominant heavyweight champion he goes better name of the Gypsy King undefeated undestructible unbeatable never will lose a fight in the history of this sport ever will retire with the crown I'm not lucky I'm blessed best thing I have in my life is love mm -hmm. from my family from my wife from my kids I don't think you can get anything better than love if you can really be loved and really love people there is no better than Nothing could come close to it. There was a number of years where I did not want to live on a daily basis. I said to God, why have you let me wake up this morning? Why didn't I die in my sleep? And I had no real reason. There wasn't one thing that made this happen. This is a continuous journey for years and years and years of depression and anxiety. I was a shadow of my former glory. I looked in the mirror and I was... What's the word? What could I... Embarrass the shamed? Let down, disappointed. I didn't think I'd go anywhere apart from a padded room. That's how down I was. I'd wake up and I think, why did I wake up this morning? This is coming from a man who had everything. Money, fame, glory, titles, a wife, a family, kids, everything. But I felt as if I had nothing. I felt there was an empty, gaping hole that was just filled with gloom and doom. I looked at myself and I thought, you're a failure. But at this time, I still wasn't educated on mental health. I'm still thinking that I'm a piece of shit and, you know, I'm, I'm a, a weak person and, and all these type of things that run through my mind all the time. I didn't care about boxing, I didn't care about living, I just wanted to die. And I was going to have a good time doing it while I was doing it. I used to drink and take drugs to get away from the depression because when I was drunk or high, then I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't think about being depressed. But as we know, when the drink wears off, it only leaves you with a bad hangover and feeling even more depressed. For someone who suffers with mental health, the worst thing we can do to escape it is take drugs or alcohol. I was making everybody's life a misery. Everybody who was close to me was pushing away. Nobody could talk to me, talk any sense into me at all. And I'd go very, very, very low at times, very low. And I'd start thinking all these crazy thoughts. I heard a voice say, no, don't do this, Tyson. Think about your kids. Think about your family and your little boys and girls growing up with no father. And everyone saying your dad was a weak man. He left us. He took the easy way out because he couldn't do anything about it. And I thought that day, I'll never, ever, ever try or think about taking my own life ever again. And I didn't. I went and got help from a, the leading psychiatrist um, doctor in the UK. I knew I couldn't do it on my own. It wasn't possible for me. Because I tried and tried and tried and ended up back in the pub, back drinking. I almost accepted that that was going to be my fate, an alcoholic. And I thought to myself, this is not me. And no matter how many people told me before this, where I was going wrong, what I was doing, you need to act to your life. You can only change your life if you want to change it. The more it, it hurt inside, the more I was hurting everybody. Everybody gave up on me. My full family thought I was definitely going to die and I was going to kill myself. And after that, I, I tried, I was thinking to myself, you know what, I need to get better, I need, to, I need to do something. And I felt the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. And for the first time in years, I knew I was going to make a comeback. The training is my medicine. They used to think all along it was boxing. 
but it's not. It's keeping fit. So without training for me, if I don't, if I have a week off out of the gym, I'm severely depressed and I don't want to live anymore. And that's being truthful. Even now, I've been suffering with it my whole life. You know, I was a little boy and I didn't know what this feeling was. And I used to feel horrible, terrible, feel like I was being left behind or something was wrong. And even though nothing was wrong. And I later found out, 27 years later, that it was anxiety that I've been suffering with my whole life. And this is where I want to spread the word on mental health. So when other people are in this position in the future, they know where to go and they know what to do because there's a blueprint. I want them to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel because no matter what they're going through in their life right now, I've already been there and done it. It's not only a miracle, but a blessing from God as well. After only two years ago, being on the verge of suicide and being as low as any man can go to being on the biggest stage in the world with the world watching, that ain't a miracle and a turnaround and a, and a true show that anybody can come back from anything, then I don't know what is. I look back on it now and I think, would I change that? I wouldn't. I'm not many people will think, well, this man's crazy for saying that on a radio show, but I wouldn't change a thing because I know it was supposed to happen and I needed to be tested to see what type of character it was. The one thing I'd never lost was confidence. Ever. Confidence in my ability to, to win. Even when I was 400 pounds, there wasn't a man then that could beat me. Never mind today. I'm a pro boxer. I'm either the best or I'm not. There is no in between for me. I'm either the best fighter or I'm not. I don't want to be number two, three or four. And I'm a Spartan. I don't care about money. I don't care about fame. I don't care about glory, belts, undisputed, being remembered. I care about knocking us out. I'm a Spartan. I live to fight. I don't care about any other thing in boxing. I fight because of... I don't know anything else. I've always been a fighter, from being born to being 30 years old now. It's all I love to do. I don't have any other passion. I've looked. The Lord knows I've looked. And if I had anything else I was good at or I could do, I'd be doing it. <laughs> I was like, I am lost without this fight game. I tried golfing. I tried clay pigeon shooting. I tried 4 by 4 in. I tried going to strip clubs, bars, restaurants, everything. And it was just like, I had this emptiness inside where I just wanted to fight. At the moment, my hobby is my job. I don't have anything else. So when I switch off from work, I switch off from my hobbies as well. So hopefully when the time's right, I'll, I'll find something new that's going to occupy my time and give me something to, uh, to strive for. Yeah. So many people told me that it wasn't possible to do and the odds of seven billion people in the world and to be the heavyweight champion of the world is so much against you and all that stuff. I know how it's what it's like to be told you can't do something. So I want to encourage people as much as I can to say, you know what, anything is possible as long as you believe and you trust it. Well, like I had a chance as a kid to walk in a boxing club and, and become who I am today, then give somebody else a chance to do the same thing because you never really know what, what a child can achieve when given the opportunity. This is what stories are made of. This, this will be a movie. Mark these words, the Tyson Fury story, AKA the Gypsy King, that will be a blockbuster Hollywood movie one day. And I cannot be beat by a fighter. A normal fighting man cannot beat the Gypsy King. The only person who can ever beat the Gypsy King is me, Tyson Fury. And I would be that his downfall. But the Gypsy King is indestructible. Never ever had problems, never had mental health struggles, never had anything. Tyson Fury is a flawed character. And the only man who can beat the Gypsy King is Tyson Fury.